we have a lot of great guests at the FCC, and it's always a, a, a pleasure to, to host them. But I'm particularly delighted today to be welcoming Sunny Sway. Sunny, uh, I first met in the early 2000s in Myanmar. I was uh, working in Bangkok and also covering the Indochina region. And, uh, and the Myanmar Times, who Sunny, uh, the, the, the newspaper that Sunny was publishing at the time, was one of uh, AFP's clients in the region. And, and uh, like all good newspaper clients, they're often your best source as well. So I used to really enjoy going to Yangon a few times a year and catching up with Sunny and hearing all the behind the scenes uh, news of what was going on in Myanmar. And it was quite an exciting time in Myanmar. There was a reformist faction within the military regime which was promising exciting new things. There was whispers of talks with Aung San Suu Kyi who was in and out of, of uh, detention at the time. And you really felt like something was happening, something exciting was happening. Um, Unfortunately, at that time, the reformist faction was purged from the military regime. And, and with it uh, came Sonny, who, uh, who was jailed, a 14-year sentence. He spent eight and a half years in jail. Um, I, obviously, we're, everyone who knew him was devastated to hear that at the time. Um, being in jail anywhere is not easy, uh, in Myanmar particularly so. And uh, through those very anxious years, we all watched and, and waited to see what would happen. Uh, and joyfully, Sonny was, was released eight and a half years later. Um, and as he will tell you in his speech, he, uh, he was undaunted, went straight back into publishing, which is pretty incredible. Um, so Sonny will talk a little bit about those experiences um, today and his new career, which has now taken him to Frontier, the news magazine that he publishes in Myanmar, which is doing very interesting and courageous work. Um, but as well as that, he'll talk about the, the future of, of, of uh, media in Myanmar and the new form that... that uh, that uh, controls on, on press freedom are taking in that country. Um, of course, in the intervening period, as well as the new regime in Myanmar, the new government in Myanmar, there was an explosion in social media, uh, which brought with it all the good things and all the bad things that we know of social media. And in, and in Myanmar, as we know, had particularly deadly effect, combining with the crackdown on the Rohingya. Um, so I'll leave you to I'll leave him to uh, to explore his thoughts on that for you. Um, I'd just like today to welcome um, a group from the Chinese International School who are over on the side of the room there. Lovely to have you all here. Um, it's 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 not often we welcome a young crowd to the FCC, and it's it's fantastic, and we should do it more often. Um, Sunny uh, was the keynote speaker at the, at the Human Rights Press Awards on the weekend, an event which the, the club uh, hosts and co-organizes. And I was very struck there by the university students who entered our tertiary category and the energy and enthusiasm that they had for their entries and really great work that they contributed and, um, and their interest in the ideas. So we're always very, very glad to help create a new generation of people who uh, are equipped and interested to speak out on issues of fundamental freedoms, uh, whichever way uh, life and work takes them in the future. So uh, now I'd like to welcome Sonny to the stage. And uh, he'll, he'll sp speak to us, and then we'll open the floor for some questions later. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah, and thank you, everyone, to have me here. And I see a lot of friends from Myanmar. And finally, hello, up there. And I was worried that you wouldn't be able to come in, but finally, you made it. That's good. Um, well, I actually had a, uh, a keynote speech, uh, which is not as free as today. 
and I normally don't really like keynote speech. I have to read the, the, the speech, and uh, I was I wasn't up to myself uh, on on Saturday, but today I will be a bit more uh, relaxed and uh, happy about um, sharing my experience here. So on uh, Saturday, uh, basically, I covered uh, the three different uh, times, errors, uh, as a publisher that, that I went through uh, in Myanmar, which is uh, military regime, and the um, uh, USDP's Uthain Sein's regime, uh, government, and after 2015, uh, NLD uh, elected government, uh, I, I express and I basically share my uh, uh, thoughts and, and experience about being a publisher there. And today, basically, what I want to talk about is 2015 up to now, uh, the, the challenges that, that we have uh, as, as a, a journalist, as a publisher, um, and hopefully uh, you would definitely uh, uh, learn something from here, and I'm so uh, 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 happy to take your, your questions and so forth. So basically, I, I am Sunny Sui, and I've been in, in this uh, media business for uh, 25 years, more than that. Um, I started as working as an advertising agency, that's kind of media, and then uh, I became a, a printer. Uh, then I became a publisher. So. Uh, it's not easy to be a printer, change to publisher, because it's two different things. But uh, uh, I basically learn a lot, and I enjoy uh, what I do. And why am I here today? Uh, I have to tell you that in 1990, uh, 1997, uh, I accidentally get a, a project from the Mendeley uh, which is the second city of Myanmar, uh, from Mendeley mayor to to start a, a daily newspaper, and I had no idea what daily newspaper was about, and I was uh, uh, being a printer for only uh, a year and a half, and uh, because he asked me whether I could do it, and I said yeah. <laughs> then I didn't sleep for six months. Basically, I was wearing only short inks all over my face. And, uh, but one thing I learned is that I love deadlines. And I, I'm the guy, I'm, I'm so easy going. Somebody has to push me all the time. Well, deadline, deadline, deadlines, which is perfect for me. And uh, so I, I was uh, doing a, a, a contract printing job for the government. And that's how I fell in love with a uh, uh, newspaper. And that was, that was my dream that, okay, one day I want to have my own newspaper. So after uh, uh, 1999, um, I moved back to, to Yangon. I moved all my printing presses and everything back to Yangon. And I started uh, uh, Myanmar Times with my partner, Australian partner, Ross Tankley, who taught me how to publish, basically, who taught me about the, the, the layout and design and the content and everything. Um, so, then again, this is a, the, the new learning curve for me because uh, back in those days, yeah, we don't really have uh, a competition whatsoever. Um, uh, then, because being a printer, I want to produce the best quality possible. So we basically use the uh, ATGSM wood-free paper, and thanks to AFP, uh, our reproduction, our, our photo, uh, photos uh, qualities are brilliant. So we basically stand up, and, uh, uh, and because of uh, a good team that I had, and because of uh, Ross driving the uh, newsroom, the, the content also uh, basically stand out. So uh, it, it was uh, a very successful uh, project. Um, then we launched our first uh, publication in February 2014. Uh, sorry, uh, 14th of February 2000. And then a year later, uh, we published uh, Myanmar Times, Myanmar Version. And both publications are basically very uh, successful in terms of, of, of editorially and, and uh, commercially. Um, so then after five years, uh, the, the 
there is a political turnaround when military government parts the military intelligence. Uh, my connection to, to my father, who is uh, the senior uh, officer of the uh, military intelligence, uh, he was taken away, and a month and a half later, um, I went to jail, basically. Then uh, they sentenced me for 14 years imprisonment for the uh, censorship offense. Uh, actually, we didn't do anything wrong. Um, then everything was, it went dark, basically. It's, 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 it's been a, uh, it's a very uh, difficult learning curve for me because I went through my imprisonment and very positively because I basically learned so many things about life and the people uh, that I don't know. And uh, uh, I, I teach in prison, uh, English, photography, and computer. And I basically take care of the patients in the hospitals uh, and so forth. So I really get to know that side of the story as, as a human being. Because when I was out there, I only deal with people there. you know. Um, and now I have to deal with all the different levels and in, in prison, everything is, everyone is a human being, and everything is so equal. And I've learned a lot from that. So my, my dream has been, like, I'm going to go out, and I'm going to reunite with my, my colleagues and my friends, and I want to go back into the uh, uh, publishing business. So they released me on the 23rd of April, and um, then I couldn't get the ticket because it was quite late. So next morning, uh, uh, I flew back to Yangon, and straight from the airport, I went to the newsroom. And I reunited with my friends and my family and uh, uh, my colleagues. And uh, since then, uh, my life has been like Rolling Stone. Um, so today, uh, I want to give you the, the, the picture of, of the, uh, uh, the media landscape uh, uh, from 2015 onwards, and what are the challenges that we have, and, and uh, what are the, um, uh, the good things and bad things about, about being a publisher. So uh, it's all about technical, uh, um, technology evolution. And I say it, uh, I was being hit by uh, a digital tsunami. Because when they took me away in 2004, the Facebook just started. And I came back in 2013, uh, after eight and a half years. Everything is so different. What is Twitter? Uh, what is Instagram? You know, what is, uh, uh, even, even, even the emails are different. Uh, and I got my first iPhone 5, and I was struggling. I didn't know how to send out the SMS messages, because I was so used to the keypad uh, phones and stuff. And there is a, uh, a huge uh, uh, a change in terms of, of the um, freedom of press and the technology that uh, changed Myanmar uh, after 2000, 2014. So I want to highlight uh, about that time uh, uh, for, for this presentation. OK, so. Currently, uh, uh, in digital Myanmar, uh, we have 33.61 uh, uh, people living in, in Myanmar. Um, so 34% of the population, which is 18 million, has the uh, internet uh, access. And uh, uh, also, the 18 million of people has the uh, uh, social media uh, access. And um, if you look at this uh, mobile connections, um, basically, you will see 101%, yes, of course, because 2014, uh, when government eased up the um, uh, telecommunication sector and uh, granted uh, license for the international telecom telco uh, operators, so like Oridus and Telenor, uh, they came in, and um, my my phone that I'm using this number, it cost me $5,700, believe it or not, back in 2000. That's why I still keep my number. And now it's uh, $1.50. You can get it for $1.50. And so cheap. And, uh, and, and because of the new telcos, uh, the, the bandwidth basically expanded. And everybody has uh, access to, to internet. And uh, uh, everything has changed. 
Um, the social media basically, uh, sorry, active mobile, uh, social media user from mobile is about 16%. So if you look at the internet usage, uh, the 18 million people has internet access, um, which is 34% of the uh, population, uh, and 16 million has the SIM cards, uh, and uh, active user, sorry, uh, and 30% of the population has uh, 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 used mobile, uh, uh, use internet through, through mobile phones. So, Facebook. Facebook has been uh, so powerful and so popular in Myanmar. Uh, we don't Google, not really. A lot of Myanmar people Facebook it. If you want to find a good restaurant, they use Facebook. If you want to find some information, they use Facebook, not, not uh, uh, Google. And it's getting uh, uh, more and more usage nowadays. Uh, it's simply because a lot of the internet uh, users don't have uh, desktop or laptops uh, in their life before. And because of the, the, the Chinese-made uh, smartphones, cheap, cheap smartphones, everybody is, is using, uh, have access to internet. And the sad thing is that uh, they think Facebook is the internet. Okay? It's all about Facebook. And if you're happy, you Facebooked. If you are angry, you Facebook. And uh, Facebook is pretty much uh, uh, become uh, part, of, uh, part of your life in Myanmar. So, um, out of 18 million, uh, basically, uh, this is the 29% uh, 20, incremental uh, compared to last year, and it's, it's keep on growing. Um, and 89% of the people uh, go get on the Facebook uh, via, via uh, Facebook, and majority use Facebook at their home. And percentage of the Facebook profiles uh, 38% is female, 63% uh, is male. But this is the, the, the looking at their profiles. Basically, there are a lot of fake profiles in, 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 in Myanmar. Please be aware of that. Um, so, what is the good thing about having a Facebook? Um, it's simply, uh, it's been, things are much more transparent and we, we get to know a lot of problems just like that and but I think we have more of a negative impact uh, because uh, the experience that that Myanmar uh, uh, people have is is so different from from people in the US and UK and and the other side of the, the globe because we didn't have enough experience to go through the different phase of the technology so suddenly, boom, there is a chat, a lot of people dating via uh, 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 Facebook and Viber and, and so forth. So uh, the point that I'm trying to make is when something happened, uh, uh, and also because of the limited uh, uh, media literacy and limited English literacy, it's very difficult for someone to do the fact-checking or study, okay, is this the, the real problem or not, right? So they just basically, oh, poor thing, share. For Facebook culture, uh, sharing is not caring. It, we have a lot of problems out of that. So especially, um, you would, uh, everybody know that uh, this uh, Rakhine crisis that occurred uh, last year, especially uh, November, sorry, uh, August, September, it started it and a lot of people react to this problem uh, on, on the Facebook. And even the, uh, 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 the, our human rights rapporteur, uh, Yang He Lee, Miss Yang He Lee, uh, has to say that uh, Facebook is now turning into a beast, which is true because uh, every institution has a very well-organized group of, I call it keyboard warriors, they would just you know, have a, several different uh, uh, fake accounts, and they would attack on the issues. Um, and after after this, uh, as uh, uh, these attacks uh, happen, 
And um, we have this hardliners uh, group, uh, which they call themselves like a patriotic uh, group, and especially monks are very, uh, very much involved, and, and they, they're very strong in terms of uh, writing uh, uh, hate speech and um, um, and so forth. So this is a graph. You know, after this uh, this uh, attack, these hardline nationalists would post about Rohingya. Um, um, November, you would see, and about uh, 50,000, uh, 50, 55,000 uh, members of the f Facebook group of Mahabharata supporters basically went really wild on, on, on the uh, Facebook and basically talk about the, the Muslim and, and the Rohingyas. So, yes, then, uh, as you may know, that finally, uh, Mark Zuckerberg has to admit that, yes, uh, he acknowledged that the people are using Facebook to uh, uh, incite the, in the real war harm. And, and I will show you a couple of slides later. Uh, I have this uh, um, uh, two different message, but aiming f coming from the one same source basically uh, uh, spreading the, the hate speech and uh, the misinformation on the Facebook. So uh, finally, uh, the, the founder of the Facebook uh, is saying that uh, there are the sensational messages going on and it's basically the Facebook is uh, uh, fueling the, uh, the incident of, of Rakhine. But uh, they said, yes, they detected and uh, they're aware of it and uh, some of the messages uh, they, they deleted. <clears throat> so, Pandia is, is one of the, um, uh, they represent basically uh, one of the, the Myanmar, sorry, the representatives, representatives of a Myanmar society, civil society organizations. They sent an open letter to, to Mark Zuckerberg about uh, what is, is happening in, in, in Myanmar. And I'm I'm, I have a very limited time, so I'm not going to go through every single line, and I'm happy to share my, my slides afterwards. So basically, we have to send the open letter and letting uh, uh, the, the Facebook know that the problems are getting worse and worse. So here is the sensational message. If you look at two different things, um, it's, it's very much similar to two different messages, but uh, going for the two different sites, uh, Buddhist and the Muslim. So be one and stay alert every time you go and eat. Uh, the, the Kala, Kala is, is uh, the Muslims, right? The Muslims are planning to launch a jihad on, on the May 11th of September. And one of your friends, in order to get ready with guns and already buy, issue the army, please forward this message, blah, 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 blah. So on the other hand, look at the same font. Yeah? Using the same font, using the same, uh, the same group, saying that, dear Islam brothers, you know, it's just creating the same thing. And, and uh, uh, this is only an uh, example. And we have tens of thousands of messages like this on the Facebook. And, you know, you have to be thankful to yourself that you don't read Burmese. Because every day I have this such a negative uh, uh, vibes on the, uh, on the Facebook reading these. So I mostly I log out all the time nowadays. <clears throat> so... Miss Yang Healy, uh, yes, uh, in, the, in the previous slides, she was like, yeah, uh, Facebook is turning into beast. She even get fooled by the misinformation. Uh, remember these uh, uh, Indian incidents in Rakhine? Uh, Ten people was uh, uh, killed, a mother, and uh, basically the military uh, uh, took action and they jailed uh, nine uh, military uh, personals. Uh, into prison because of uh, involvement with this killing, mass killing. And uh, one of the TV channels from Myanmar basically uh, said that there was, a, uh, there was a, a Myanmar New Year's Day and there was a, a government, uh, sorry, president's uh, amnesty, a pardon. And uh, one of the TV channels uh, misinformed uh, that, uh, saying that these uh, seven Tamil are guilty of Indian uh, 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 soldiers released, basically. So she reacted to that, and after that, um, she deleted and she apologized. So 
th these are the, uh, the very uh, 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 small, small samples that uh, we are giving you now. And it, it is happening um, every day, every minute in, in Myanmar. And because of the, the rise of the, the, the technology and uh, Facebook. So <clears throat> when we are uh, reporting about Rakhine, and everybody is in, uh, wants to know how difficult it is and how uh, easy it is or how risky it is. Yes, um, it's always difficult um, when you don't have uh, access to what's going on. So um, in order to report uh, Rakhine issues, uh, we basically have to choose three ways. Uh, one is uh, the trips that are arranged by the, the government, uh, I call it guided tour groups. You go to the specific uh, villages with a very limited uh, time, you interview uh, specific people, and then you have to go back. Uh, so these are the, the arranged by the government, and at least you get there and you get to speak to, to, to someone. Um, and second, uh, uh, we've sent our uh, reporters uh, to journalists to the Cox's Bazaar and get the information of what's exactly what they've been through and, 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 and so forth. And third, we sneaked in. We sneaked in, we sneaked out. Uh, your kind uh, state has been, uh, 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 how do you call it, uh, media phobia. Uh, the, the locals don't like to see uh, any journalist coming into the, uh, the state, doesn't matter whether you are uh, a local journalist or international journalist, uh, uh, they just don't want to see the camera and, uh, yeah, and, and the journalist. So basically, it's quite risky. Uh, so for, for, to give you an example, uh, a friend of, uh, sorry, uh, one of my journalists basically went there uh, on his own, uh, then uh, got attacked by the local he is Rakhine, and he got uh, uh, mobbed by, by local Rakhine uh, uh, people. So he had to run and, and hide somewhere. You know who hit him? The Muslim family. Right? So next day, very early in the morning, uh, they arranged the taxi and the motorcycle. He basically uh, uh, sneaked out of there. And so the, the, the stakes are quite, quite uh, high. And... Um, um, it's very difficult to, 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 to get access to information uh, to, to Rakhine at this point. So uh, the UN, uh, this UN the chief, uh, he is very new in town, and this is what he said. Um, you know, if we start compromising our principles, then we risk undermining our own work. Uh, basically, the Tamado is the military. The military and the civilian government and the armed groups are all involved in this process. If there is a discussion between the parties, it has to be all uh, between the all parties. And I think this is the, the most uh, uh, challenging part that, that trying to get everyone involved and, and talk about it, participate, involved about it. Um, basically, another thing is, uh, 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 although the government minders did not impose restriction on what could be asked at Indian or want the reporters to be careful about what they wrote, the group had only a few minutes and stopped to the question. This is the, 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 the guided tour that uh, I'm talking about. So one of, uh, uh, this is not the first time, I think we went there three, four times. So what happened is, uh, there is a, uh, it's a long journey, it's a long trip, and uh, you have to go in into a group, and you cannot be a part of. You can't basically leave the group because it's, everything is quite quite dangerous. So they would just drive and stop in one village, and you probably have time for five minutes to to talk to to uh, uh, interview uh, the, the, the the household or, or a group of people. Then it's like, all right, all right, right, time's up. Go, 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 go. Right. So. Um, it's been it's been uh, uh, difficult uh, for for both international and, 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 and even for the local journalists to get the, the actual information of what is going on. And uh, 
this is pretty much about, about what is happening at the Rakhine, and uh, uh, I want to talk about uh, the, what happened to, to the two writers, uh, reporters, that are uh, being charged for the, the, the Secret Act. Uh, and basically what, now, you know, last, last, last uh, a couple of weeks ago, uh, one of the, the, the key witness from the, uh, the police, uh, he himself as a police uh, officer, uh, basically blew the, he blew the whistle because he was basically uh, stationed uh, in Indian, the, where the, the, the 10 people mass killing was there. And um, uh, he was talking to one of the uh, reporters, uh, Wallone, who is my friend. And um, because he was dealing with, uh, he was talking to, to uh, writers, uh, journalists, and he was basically uh, uh, detained and, and being house arrested for past two and a half months. And finally, uh, he pretended that he's quiet and he will be on the government side. And so they took him to the court and basically at the court he was wearing the uniform and he said, it's a setup. We've been told that you have to uh, uh, frame uh, these uh, two journalists and otherwise I'm gonna put you in jail. So this is the, uh, the, the Brigadier General Police was briefing to the uh, uh, group of uh, a member of police and basically they, they acted and, and they arrested uh, uh, two journalists. So um, because of uh, his, uh, uh, his uh, uh, how do you say it, comment at, at, the, at the court, the, the, the story basically flipped uh, completely upside down and uh, now uh, because he said everything what he heard from his chief and he basically made the statement at the court and suddenly the uh, the police uh, saying that he is not uh, eligible to make this kind of statement uh, and then this kind of stopped but the next court uh, appointment uh, the court at uh, the judge uh, basically overruled and judge was saying that he is qualified to testify so he will be continuing testifying. So this is a huge uh, uh, progress, uh, uh, step forward uh, for, for, the, for the judiciary uh, sector and, and for the uh, Walong and uh, uh, Josu two reporters. And I hope that uh, we will have an upper hand, uh, then he will, uh, they will probably get uh, a release very soon. It's simply because uh, Walong's wife is uh, now six months pregnant and she is gonna do on the 23rd of August. I spoke to her before I came here, and she said uh, the the first thing, the, the, everything she wants to do, to have is like have her husband back to, for the the, the delivery. Uh, thank you so much for for listening, uh, uh, for my chance to sharing my experience here. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sonny. Uh, we'll take some questions now. The, the first one will be from uh, President uh, Florence de Changi, and, uh, and then we'll, we'll move to the floor. And uh, if, if one of our students could uh, think of a question as well, I'll call on you too. Thank you. Yes, I'm Florence de Changi. I report for Le Monde and uh, the French National Radio. Um, <clears throat> first of all, Sonny, uh, again, it's wonderful to have you here. It's a privilege uh, what you've uh, done to journalism and your witnessing is, um, is inspiring to, uh, to all of us. Um, about what you showed us, I find it very perplexing to see these messages because it really looks as if this horrible situation has been somehow engineered by people using Facebook. Unless I misunderstand, but I never realized that you really had apparently an organization promoting this hatred speech on both sides. So yes, Facebook is the tool, but the real question is who is using this tool? So that's the uh, uh, first question, and I'll squeeze the second one uh, using my privilege, um, about um, the writers. Um, what, what, thank you for the update uh, and the fact that it was possibly a setup is um, something that 
we expected, but I also read in, the, um, in your magazine that there may be a further twist to the story in the sense that this police man who has, was possibly a whistleblower was later seen allowed more than expected. So if you could clarify this, because it seems even more complicated than, than just a setup and he was a, a whistleblower, apparently he may be encouraged to do this. The whole situation looks incredibly complicated. Thank you. Um, it's very difficult to, to clarify or ad identify who are basically circulating the hate speeches and uh, basically fueling the, uh, the incident. But one thing though, please do not forget that uh, when something is not peaceful, um, there are a lot of things happening. I mean, we are seeing, witnessing a lot of drugs production, uh, meth, meth, what, Yaba, uh, meth, yes. And uh, it's a huge uh, trade going on there. Uh, don't forget about the, the arm trade, uh, arm dealings, and the human trafficking, you know. When uh, something is not stable, this is the, the, the time for them to, to make money out of it. So who, who is doing this? I think it's not only uh, arm dealers, uh, drug traffickers, and, and, and uh, human traffickers. I think whoever involved with this thing and are trying to, 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 to gain uh, a, a political, uh, a, get the political gain, they're making profit out of it. Uh, and poor people have to suffer from it. Uh, I'm not talking about uh, Rohingya or the Buddhists. All the people, uh, uh, you know, all majorities, uh, minorities, uh, uh, have to suffer from it. If you look at, from the, the, the humanitarian point of view, this is the, the, the maybe the second worst uh, humanitarian crisis after what is happening in, uh, 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 yeah, yes. And uh, so they are, they are basically uh, fueling uh, this situation uh, just for their political gain. The second uh, question that you have, the, the police, why he said that? Um, it's amazing. It's uh, completely uh, a, a surprise to all of us. But he made one really good statement that he said, uh, it doesn't really matter which rent uh, of, of you have. Uh, every rank has to be uh, uh, honest and there is an honor for it. Uh, so uh, he is basically basically showing that uh, his whole family is, is, is police. His father used to be police. So he's proud to be police and he doesn't really mind saying the truth. Basically that's, that's the whole reason. But, but is he protected? Is he allowed to do that? What is no. his current situation? Well, after he said that, he got sentenced for one year in prison. Yeah, right. And just the one thing I wanted to clarify, I read in the magazine, but maybe it's, it is from before, that he was surprisingly allowed to talk to journalists, etc. So you were questioning, or whoever wrote the editorial in the magazine, that maybe there was more to it, right? Well, actually, the police tax force, I think, uh, wasn't expecting that he would say something like that. Right? So when he was talking to, after the court, after he gave his statement, out, outside the court, he was trying to speak to the, the uh, local uh, media and somebody basically snatched him away. So he wasn't really free to talk to, to right. the media. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. So some questions from the floor. Yeah. Uh, Eric first. Thank you. Thanks, Sarah. Um, and thank you, Sonny. Um, you're a great fighter for freedom of speech, right? You see what it does. You see what it's doing. In. Yes. I mean, the, the, I mean, you put smartphones in the hands of the Burmese people and Facebook and you saw the result. You get the Rohingya crisis. So where do you put the limits? I mean, you're blaming Facebook. You can just as easily blame WhatsApp, Viber, whatever. I mean, this is just a, a, a method of transmitting this message. So, you know, maybe the government that put you in jail, so you as a kind of threat that maybe we are seeing Facebook is a threat to, to stability with, with the hate speech. So where do you put the limit on freedom of speech? Or do you give unfettered freedom of speech which ends up with a, a crisis like the Rohingya? So, in, so you know, where do you put the limits on freedom of speech? 
Okay, can you just give me one, one, one question? Yeah. Can you give people unlimited freedom of speech to say anything they like? I mean, the, the famous one was the right to shout fire in a crowded cinema. So freedom of speech in many ways is a myth. There are limits on freedom of speech. Where would you put your limits in Sunny's way? With your experience, eight and a half years in jail, where do you put the limits on freedom of speech? Well, I believe that myself, that uh, freedom of speech doesn't, I don't think you should limit freedom of speech. But as long as you basically report and tell the story with a very good intention, and I think our job is to get close to the truth as much as possible, and basically find the facts and the make the story and the uh, uh, distribute, uh, circulate the, the facts, I think uh, uh, that's, that's how it is. I but I'm not talking about journalists, I'm talking about giving people the freedom of speech to stir up hate on Facebook against the Rohingyas or against Hindus or Muslims. Where do, you, do you give people free reign to do that or should you limit it? Well, um, that's a tough question. Um, I think uh, looking at the situation, um, I think uh, I just, I know I shouldn't be talking about journalist, journalism, but I think our job is, is, is the gatekeeper. Uh, at this point, we are failing our, uh, our duties to do so because it's simply when someone circulates the fake news, our job is to filter and our job is to do the fact checking. By the time we come up with the facts and, and everything, this fake news already run, run, run six times throughout the globe. So I think we are failing from it. Um, people are abusing Facebook and, and the social media. And so that sort of uh, abusive work should be uh, limited, not the press freedom. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Su. Um, I'm, I come from the University of Hong Kong and uh, I'm a journalism student. Uh, I have a question that, as far as I know, uh, in Myanmar, the uh, government-controlled newspaper uh, has been exceed, uh, exceeded uh, by the newspaper of private aunt. Um, do you think the private newspaper had done a good job in fighting against the, the fake news? And uh, um, how do you see their performance in reporting the Rohingya crisis last year? Thank you. Um, when, it, when it comes to uh, religion issues, uh, it tends to, to bias and uh, tend to take side. Especially when it comes to Rakhine issue, uh, majority of the publications, private sector publications, private publications took side, and uh, uh, it's kind of bias, and that's what we've been experiencing. And uh, uh, and also, then again, uh, I, I said it uh, uh, a while ago. It really depends on on the. Um, the, the literacy, uh, the media literacy, the English literacy, uh, it's still very, very limited. Uh, so we have more than, uh, what, 3,000, nearly 3,000 journalists uh, working in the industry. And if you ask me how many, what percentage of the, the qualified journalists, uh, it's very, very few, uh, very, very small percentage. It's not their fault because we don't have a proper journalism school. I mean, we used to, the, the government, military government used to ban the uh, political science, uh, uh, and we can't study politi political science in university, nor the journalism. So, you know, you have to look up to someone and copy someone. Um, so it's still a very challenging uh, part for, for uh, this issue is very challenging for our media industry. Just the final question now, I'm afraid we're running out of time. Would one of the Chinese international students like to put up their hand? <laughs> there we go, well done. <laughs> Hi. Are you ever afraid that the government is going to re-crack down on people in your industry and do you have a fear that they might 
uh, try to recontrol people who do things like you do? Oh yeah, I think um, uh, it's it's been a um, um, everyday uh, a struggle for us because uh, I'll just give you this example again. Uh, my friend Walom, um, what happened to to two writers uh, reporters? Um, looking at that, anything could happen. Um, so basically, um, we have this self censorship. Uh, with the uh, invisible ceiling, you know, you don't really know how high you can go, and and we all have to follow our gut feeling, and basically report about it. And yes, uh, if you're asking video journalists, uh, uh, photo journalists, and and the, the the journalists, we all have to worry about what we we report, uh, and that's not good. I think that's that's. The freedom of press is basically going backwards because of the feelings that we are having. It's not, not a happy feeling at all. Thank you. Thanks very much, Sunny. Um, really great to hear your reflections on the new media in Myanmar and also the updates on the Myanmar journalists who are in custody at the moment. The FCC's been, and other press clubs around Asia have, have been very active on, on, uh, on that case, uh, raising awareness. Uh, we also led a petition campaign, which uh, attracted uh, 40,000, 50,000 signatures in the end. We presented it to uh, consulates and embassies around the region, including here in Hong Kong. So we stand ready to uh, keep making a big noise on that issue. And also, we're much more ready, of course, to celebrate uh, when and if they're released. And as Sunny said, things are looking a bit more positive on that front. So uh, thank you very much for all coming. I'd just like to call Sunny over to give him a little token of appreciation from the club. <laughs> Thank you very much.